boys. Today I'm ranking every game mode in Galaxy of Heroes um, based on how much I like them. Uh, this is totally subjective. Uh, you might have a different list. Um, but general rule of thumb, if I like the game mode more, it's going to be higher, closer to S tier. Uh, if it's a shit game mode uh, that's terrible, it's going to be an F tier. Um, for some of the ones that are ranked lower, I might go into a little bit of how I think those game modes could be improved. Um, but I am kind of planning a series where we're going to go through some of the game modes that aren't the greatest right now and kind of look at how we could go about improving them. So let's start off the list uh, without further ado. Uh, light side and dark side battles. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and throw this one in C tier. There's nothing wrong, I think, with light side dark side battles, really. Um, the only thing that is kind of... I don't know. It's just it's like a progression that you just go through and then you're done with it. You never really come back to it other than just simming them. And also, uh, it could be a little bit higher up. I feel like if we were allowed to sim the hard nodes more than five times in a day, I don't know why there's only five sims per day. It really just feels like a way to just basically halt your progress. But the energy is already halting your progress because you. Could just you're just having to farm really wide if you want to farm a bunch of characters whereas if you they just made it like eight or ten sims a day you could farm a character faster but it wouldn't necessarily help you get like all of the characters faster so i don't really think it would hurt that much to increase those number of sims that would certainly bump it up at least a couple tiers but honestly it's not going to go to s tier ever because it's just not that exciting Cantina Battles. I'm going to go Cantina Battles in B tier. Uh, the reason I think Cantina Battles is above Light Side and Dark Side Battles is because I prefer farming characters in Cantina. Yes, you cost more crystals to refresh the energy, but there's no cap on the uh, battles. So you can farm characters much faster. You get Cantina Tokens, which for most of us just go into Shard Shop Currency, but Shard Shop Currency is not the worst thing ever. Um, it might be higher up if I didn't have to farm signal data there, and if Omega and Omicron mats were slightly higher drop rates there, but that's kind of nitpicky. I really don't think... Again, it's a boring game mode. It's not going to go much higher than that. Mod Battles is next. Uh, mod Battles, I'm going to put in D tier. Yeah, I'm going to put in D tier. Um, mod Battles are incredibly boring. Once you finish the challenges, which the challenges aren't hard, it's just annoying to have to farm them. Most of the mod battles you don't even use. Uh, farming the mod mats, the slicing mats from mod battles takes forever. The drop rates on those could honestly be doubled and it's still, I still wouldn't have enough. Um, I hate it when I have to refresh mod battles to farm more mod slicing mats. Um, just not really a fan of the mod grind in general. Obviously it's a great way to like differentiate your roster and be better than other people, but it's not my favorite. So it's going to D tier. Also joining it in D tier is going to be fleet battles. Actually, no, I won't put an F tier. I'll reserve F tier for some other stuff later on. Uh, fleet battles are not enjoyable. I'm going through the fleet battles again on my free-to-play. And the first thing is, they're incredibly hard. Especially those last uh, stage 5 and stage 5 hard are incredibly difficult. And especially when you compare it to like the light side battles and dark side battles. You have to have really good ships and a really solid strategy and then get pretty good RNG. The only saving grace to fleet battles is that you can actually lose one ship and still three star uh, a battle. But if you lose more than one ship, you, you don't get those three stars. So that's the only saving grace for it. Again, it's also capped just like light side and dark side is. Except for you have to also compete with gear 12 mats when i know you also have to do that in light side and dark side energy but it feels like even more so in fleets that you like have so many different fleet pieces that you need to get that you're competing with and so i really don't like farming characters on fleet nodes and i'm putting fleet nodes that uh in d tier because most of the ships are fleet node farms and ships should be double farm uh after they've been in the game for a year give them two shards after they've been in the game for a year it is ridiculous that we're still farming ships at this ridiculous pace. Please, CG, for the love of all that is holy, this will save my free-to-play account so much time, and I will love things so much more if fleet, if ships were just double shop, double shard farmable, accelerated farmable. Please, 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 please. All right, enough harping on that. Uh, squad Arena. I, Squad Arena as a game mode is pretty unenjoyable, but it's also just kind of like free rewards, so I don't want to discredit it too much, but it's also just kind of boring, you know, like there's not a lot of reason to climb in Squad Arena anymore. 
I think we'll go C tier. There's nothing really wrong with Squad Arena. It's just that, one, the rewards in it aren't worth it, but I don't want the rewards tied to Squad Arena. If I would rather them be tied to GAC, which we'll talk about in a minute. But it's like free rewards, basically, so I can't really harp on it too much. Maybe like some titles or player cards for hitting like number one in Squad Arena would be kind of cool. Just like cosmetic things to like be like, oh, hey, I did this. But even then, like, eh. I don't love that Prestige is the only way to, it uh, can only be farmed there really uh, efficiently. But at the same time, it's like we don't really have a better use for our Squad Arena currency. So why not use it on Prestige um, when you're farming capital ships and then hoard enough for the next capital ship when you have them all. So... Uh, Squadron is fine. It's going to go C tier. It's not a good game mode. It's not a bad game mode. It goes right in the middle. Um, challenges. I'll put challenges in A tier. These are the challenges that you do daily. They're free rewards. They're challenging enough in the early game to like make you for force you to farm a couple of different things. Uh, this I'm going to include fleet challenges with this. I'm kind of lumping them all in together. You get free, free things every day for signing in. There's not a whole lot wrong with it honestly i mean sure they could maybe increase the amount of times you could do it so maybe increase the gear to like eight and the challenges like five but then I, it's just like me being nitpicky like and wanting more free stuff so uh, challenges are a good game mode in a solid place um they rebalance the gear a while back so they get better gear now um so no problems with challenges galactic war yeah i'm doing it galactic war is going in f tier um I'm having to replay through Galactic War on my free-to-play account, or I just recently did, and I'm going to have to do it again when we start another new free-to-play account, which more info on that soon. Um, I hate playing through Galactic War, especially when I have to do it manually. Eventually, it does become free rewards, but the fact that I have to clear it 50 times is the bane of my existence. I would rather shove a DS stylus through my urethra than have to play through another Galactic War manually. It is the most... It is a, a painstaking experience for the early game that it's going in F tier. I don't care. Events. Events are going in A tier. So these are the events that you just see on like a regular basis. This is um, assault battles, uh, your different, like, even marquee events. Um, it's just free rewards. Uh, intro to characters is a lot of fun, actually, I think. Yeah, you have to whale to get the new characters, but like that's going to be a thing anyways. And a lot of hero collector games like this don't even give you new characters. They just make you like figure out a way to get them or pay to get them. At least CG is giving us a way to unlock them and try them out a little bit, get a little taste to see if we want to invest in that character. So I have no problem with marquee events. I've got no problem with assault battles. Assault battles, in fact, are pretty fun. Give you a nice little challenge and a way to use multiple teams um, and give really solid rewards. Uh, so... I've got no problem with the normal events. This is not Galactic Challenges. We'll talk about those in a second. Actually, let's talk about them next. Galactic Challenges. This is how you farm your Omicron mats. Hence why we're using the Omicron to, to signify it. Um, these are one of the worst game modes in the game. In fact, we're moving Galactic War up a tier. Remember how I hated Galactic War? I'm moving it up a tier because Galactic Challenges deserves to be an F tier this bad. Holy shit. If I have to play through one more Gungan galactic challenge where they have just infinite health and murder my team before i can even cough up a single word before my will to live can even start to surmise i might just go on a not youtube appropriate thing here and severely harm many people in a way that in minecraft not actually in real life in a way that is very gruesome and unfortunate for those people galactic challenges kills my will to live it kills me every time i see it come up i do not want to do them i am so short on omicrons because every time i see them come up i go eh i'll do it later eh i'll do it later eh i'll do it later and then i don't do it and i'm like damn why do i only have two omicrons on my free to I, why do I only have one Omicron on my free-to-play account that is getting close to a year old? Probably because I haven't done most of my Galactic Challenges. Galactic Challenges needs to change completely. It needs a complete overhaul on how it's done. It makes me want to die every single time I play it. I, I, I don't think I can express how much I hate Galactic Challenges with the words that are in my head. It, it's more of like pictures of me doing heinous acts and then I think TOS, TOS, TOS. And then I think you should just do it anyways because Galactic Challenges are that bad. 
All right, we'll end that discussion there. Raids. Raids is tough because if we're just talking about Naboo, I'm probably going to put like C tier. If we're talking about like Sith Raid and the early raids, like I'm B or A tier. Like those tiers, those were so much fun getting together with people, theory crafting. Like some of my favorites. If we're talking indoor, I mean, we're going on crate, same thing. So I think we'll land in C tier. My problem with raids, one is we haven't had a raid character in forever. That was one of the coolest things about the raids was unlocking new characters. CLS completely changed the game. General Kenobi was amazing when he first came to the game. Treya, to this day, just completely shakes up the meta. And that was I loved having cool raid characters come out and being like with your guild. It gave you incentive to be like, dude, we have to build up the teams to clear this raid. It's not an optional thing. Like we have to do it in order to get these shards and get this character as soon as possible i just i wish they would release new raid characters and so i know cg wants to monetize the game so here's the thing what i think what i would really like to see is increase the amount of get three you get from the most recent raid and then make it so that you can buy the most recent raid character with get three then once they are no longer a get uh, the most recent raid, you can buy them with get two or uh, mark two, mark three raid currency. So increase the amount of mark three that we get. Don't give us a new currency. We don't need a fourth fricking currency. Increase the amount of mark three we get. So this way you incentivize or you allow your high end players that are clearing this raid to get that extra um, currency and maybe you only attach that extra currency to like the last few tiers uh last few boxes of the the raid then let us spend that on the character and unlock them then yes people might hoard up a little bit and be able to get some extra shards right at the start but it makes it so that way only the people that everyone can get them that's doing at least some sort of portion of the raid but then it's giving more to some people and less to others um, more to those like in-game people and they can get the character faster. That's my thought on it. Or just give us a raid character and give us shards in the boxes. Like that's a, an easy fix to that as well. But if they don't want us to completely do that, there's another option. All right, territory battles. We're playing through Hoth on the free-to-play guild right now. And I actually really like Hoth. Hoth is kind of fun. Um, not gonna lie. Rise of the Empire, not so much. The reason I think Hoth is more fun is because combat missions are actually important. Character missions are actually viable for most people. Same thing with Geonosis, honestly, is that combat missions are actually somewhat viable and uh, the character missions to get character shards are somewhat doable for most people. Having to have Inquisitors all at Relic 7 to get Reva, not as enjoyable. Also, Reva, not really incentivized to get a character that I don't really care about that much. Yeah, I know she's meta, she can counter GLs, all that stuff. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the fact that lore-wise, don't get passionate about the character. I'm probably not going to farm them. Territory battles, it's going to D tier. It's just so boring. It's There's so much potential to have the game mode be fun and be good. And Rise of the Empire killed it for me. Uh, I'm not going to lie. I don't love Rise of the Empire. I do my combat missions if we need it for that phase. But otherwise, I just go in, platoons, deploy, done. Yeah, it's free rewards, but I feel like the idea of getting together for your guild and pushing zones and getting stars, like that should be more exciting and more fun than it is in the game. I don't have, honestly, the best ideas on how to fix it um, because I know that if you... I mean, it needs like a total overhaul to be fixed, honestly, because I feel like the requirements go up way too fast in Rise of the Empire. Going straight from Relic 5 to, as the first tier, it's like... I don't even have that many characters that are going to be at Relic 5 on my roster, let alone 6, uh, six and 7 when you get to the next couple planets. So, Territory Battles is going to D tier. Not a super enjoyable game mode. Alright, Grand Arena is going to S tier. Uh, if it was any question about an S tier game mode in this game, there is only one. It's Grand Arena. Uh, it is the reason this game has survived as long as it has. It is the most fun game mode. Um, CG, just don't touch it fix your matchmaking that's the only thing 
um, make it so that way there's at least like it doesn't have to be GP based matchmaking, but like GP threshold, like some sort of you can't be a certain percentage higher than your opponent or something because getting placed against somebody that's four times your GP is just ridiculous, especially in Carbonite. Like, have an inactive bracket or something where it's like these higher rosters at least get somewhat grouped together. Like, it's just ridiculous the matchmaking. Other than that, so much fun to put your whole roster up against somebody else's whole roster in a hero collector game. Other games have tried to model their game mode like this off of um, Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes. This is the reason people play this game. If it went away tomorrow, this game would drop in players by like 90%, I feel like. Maybe that's an exaggeration, but uh, I GSC is a ton of fun. I try to stream my GSAs whenever I can. I love them. Uh, Territory Wars. Territory Wars needs some help, but I actually enjoy Territory Wars. I'm going to give Territory Wars a B tier. I know a lot of people are, I feel like the game is stale. Territory Wars game uh, meta is pretty stale, and that's true to an extent, but I feel like it, it at least does an okay job at duplicating the Grand Arena experience in a guild format. It doesn't do a great job, and it certainly has ways that it can improve, and I've had people talk about like, kind of formatting almost like Rise of the Empire where there's like planets and you have to like conquer a planet and then it branches off into another path or something and like bonus zones and things like that or maybe like almost grouping your your guild into smaller groups or individuals and then you kind of like play like a GAC against that person and do something like that I, I haven't been in love with a lot of those ideas um, I know people hate 3v3 um, personally I kind of like 3v3 I, like, I think it shakes up the meta and I think it's actually kind of fun hot take i know but maybe like a zone that's 3v3 would be kind of fun um a zone that's just solo characters i don't know like switch up things make it a little different i think could be a lot of fun um maybe like abilities that you earn for like capturing certain zones kind of like you have in territory battles where you get like a platoon finish so you get like a special ability or bonus and then the next zone maybe something like that where you could go to clear certain zones and do this, that kind of thing the problem though is that is if you make it more complex there's going to be people that don't like it. Honestly, I'm all for it. Let's make it complicated. Let's make it fun, intricate. It adds more strategy. It adds more layers to the uh, game. I, I would love it. Conquest. Conquest is going in F tier. Conquest caused me to quit the game at one point. When Conquest first came out, they locked Cat behind it. Uh, Razor Crest first, but then Cat. And I realized I was so excited about going for Jedi Master Kenobi when I realized how good Jedi Master Kenobi was going to be with Cat versus without I, I had started farming Jedi Master Kenobi and I stopped I was just stopped playing the game because I was like there's no way I'm going to get Cat because my roster was at like 3 million GP at the time I was so excited about going for my first GL and then basically half the power of the GL was getting cut off for me because oh you don't have enough GP sucks for you and even if I had had 4 million GP there's no way I was going to be able to get um, gold crate in that conquest at all. So I stopped. I literally stopped for about a year playing the game because I was like, this game mode sucks so bad. It has not improved by much. The, I, I'll give CG some credit. It has improved slightly. The feats have become a little bit easier. Lightspeed bundles have helped a lot of players get more feats, but I'm not gonna give it too much credit for that because making people pay in order to get the feats done, I feel like is not making the game mode more accessible. We need to make Conquest more accessible. I could go on a whole rant about the ways in which Conquest could be more accessible. I mean, there's literally no point in doing easy or normal Conquest um, is one piece of it. Why is Proving Grounds the only gosh darn way to farm characters that have been out of Conquest for years at this point? It is ridiculous. Conquest needs a total overhaul. It needs to be improved. Um, and I will not be passionate about conquests anytime soon. Anyways, boys, uh, I'll put a link to this tier list if you want to make your own and tell me what you disagree with or agree with. But that's been my rants on all of the different game modes in Galaxy of Heroes and where they rank. Uh, so, only one S tier, a couple of A tiers, a couple of B tiers, mostly C, D, and F tiers. <laughs> Grand Arena is doing a lot of the heavy lifting for this game. Uh, let me know if you guys agree or disagree in the comments below. Like the video, subscribe, take care and peace.